the German government paid over half a million dollars to have Arch Linux rewrite their package management tools in Rust. Why? I mean, put a, let's put aside for a minute thoughts about Rust as a programming language. Why on God's green earth would the German government care about what language is used for package management tools and libraries in Arch Linux. That is the strangest spending of money I can. Now, I'm all for I'm all for funding of open source software that that governments can utilize and can end up saving potentially taxpayers money. I've seen that work out in the past where a government says, says OK, that particular software package does, you know, 90 percent of what we in the government need. And if it was just a little bit better, it would save us from having to license, you know, a bunch of other different tools and could say save taxpayers money. So we're going to give a little bit of money as a grant to that project to to make up that that little 10% functionality difference, save money for the taxpayers, help out an open source project. Okay, sure, I get it. But what on earth does it matter to the Germans? <laughs> that Arch Linux is using Rust. Let, let me walk, walk through what I'm just going to read what I posted over on uh, over on X yesterday. It appears that Arch Linux is moving towards replacing key components like the Pac-Man package manager with Rust based rewrites. The sovereign tech agency, Germany, funded $562,800 US or a little over half a million worth of development on ALPM, the Arch Linux package management work. That work was focused almost entirely like 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 completely on creating quote rust libraries and tools for arch package management which aims to quote uh, maintain compatibility with Pac-Man end quote. Now, and this is very important, as of this moment, the Rust ALPM work, the, the Rust-based rewrites and, and new libraries and all these sorts of things, they have not fully replaced Pac-Man, right? So the Arch Pac-Man package manager tool is not entirely rewritten. They've, they've, uh, they've rewritten and created new Arch-based tools in the package management ecosystem, and they're gearing towards a drop-in replacement of of pac-man but but that said common sense would indicate that replacement is clearly the goal uh, otherwise the heavily funded development would be entirely nonsensical and there would be no point with them declaring that they were aiming to maintain compatibility with uh the, with the previous pac-man releases so um, clearly a, a replacement is the goal um, it's worth noting also that existing Arch package management tools, such as Pac-Man, are licensed under the GPL. However, the new Rust-based libraries and replacements are licensed under the MIT license. And this is an issue we've seen come up repeatedly um, over, over the last year or so of tools written in the GPL or using it released into a GPL license, open source and free software, right? Um, uh, the various, uh, uh, the GNU core utilities is a great example of them. Where a group of people decide, um, oftentimes funded or encouraged by some corporation or another, Canonical, Red Hat, etc., cetera, uh, to, to rewrite the, the tools in Rust specifically using an MIT or an MIT compatible license. Um, now, the MIT license is not a bad license. I don't, I don't necessarily have anything against it. A license is just a license, right? Uh, the person developing and releasing code gets to choose what license they want. If they want the GPL or, uh, you know, BSD or MIT or Apache or what have you. Totally fine. I have no real issues with that. In fact, Linus Torvalds himself is famous for being opposed to some versions of the GPL, but liking others, right? Like Linux, the kernel is under the GPL v2, but he is like, 
intensely opposed to GPL v3, right? This is a this is a common thing. Everyone has their own feelings on licensing. That's fine. But there's there is a consistent and steady pattern now of rewriting existing working GPL licensed code in Rust and using an MIT license, right? That's been a constant and ongoing pattern. I mean, we're seeing that happening in Debian, uh, in Ubuntu, we're seeing that happen with the GNU core utilities. Uh, and now we're even seeing it in Arch Linux itself, where they're moving away from not just C or C++ or any of a variety of other languages towards Rust, but they're moving away from GPL v2 and GPL v3 towards MIT license. Now, you may like Rust, and you may like MIT licensing, but there clearly is a motive here, right? I mean, it's um, for good or worse, I think it's worth having a discussion about why exactly this is happening, who stands to benefit from these sorts of not just programming language changes, but licensing changes that are, that are fairly dramatic across a wide variety of of Linux based systems. I mean, it's it's all all over the map at this point. Um, and so I, it's, it's worth noting, it's distinctly worth noting, there does seem to be a very real concerted effort to move a lot of these free software -y systems away from GPL and GPL compatible licensing. Uh, and a lot of that work seems to be laser focused on the rust based rewrites. It's just, it, it's something that, that seems to be coming up a lot. Um, an, another bit of things that are, that are worth pointing out here. Um, they started talking quite a lot about how they're aiming to maintain compatibility with, with Pac-Man. And this is a fairly common uh, statement to come from Rust-based rewrites. But backwards compatibility tends to be poor, right? Um, we see that with everything from sudo to the GNU core utilities and some of the other uh, package management rewrites and the like that we've had um, coming down the Rust rewrite pipeline. Um, and they tend to be extraordinarily buggy um, and not feature complete and not compatible. I mean, heck, the, the Rust-based rewrite of the date command was wildly incompatible with the GNU core utilities date command. It kind of sort of worked the same, but it was it might as well have been a different tool because it broke a, a multitude of other scripts that relied on it and the like. And so when I see statements coming from Rust rewrite projects that, that laser focus in on, oh, we're going to maintain compatibility with this thing that we're re re rewriting right now. And we're definitely not looking to replace it completely. That tells me that, A, they're looking to replace it completely as quickly as possible. That's been the pattern so far. And so we'll, we'll see if that holds true for the Arch Linux package management in Rust project. Um, but it also tells me that they will probably push for that change before it is functionally ready. That's been the pattern. Now, I would hope that that's not the case. Uh, I would hope that if they do eventually ship this Arch Linux package management with Rust, that they do so and they wait until not only is it uh, fully compatible with existing Pac-Man, but better, you know, like as in it performs better, it works better, it has less bugs, it's it's better tested. Um, I would hope that they'd wait to do that. I don't think they will, but we'll see, we'll see with Arch. Which kind of circles us back to why exactly is the German government getting involved here? What What is it that the German government has to benefit from taking working software that maybe they want to use, maybe they don't. Maybe they're like, hey, yeah, I'm going to base, um, you know, uh, uh, a bunch of school systems on Arch Linux or use some of our government servers to use Arch Linux. Great. Okay, fine. Why take working software as a taxpayer-funded government agency and turn around and say, well, let's rewrite the part that works in the programming language that appears to almost be a religious cult in the in the case of rust that's bizarre that's that's weird that's it's a weird thing to do um i've reached out to the sovereign tech agency to to kind of get their thoughts on this like what was the motivation if you look at um their website very little uh is 
uh, actually talked about here. They say uh, Arch Linux package management, rigorous modernization of the foundational package management layers with reusable and memory safe implementations. Um, and they, they're, they've showed how much they've invested over the last, you know, year and a half plus, right? So over, over half a, over half a million, or sorry, over half a million euros. I got that wrong. It's not us dollars. Uh, well, it's over half a million us dollars anyway. Um, and so the, the, the real question is though, why, um, is, are there rusts, true believer cultists inside the German government. I mean, that's a, that's a weird com conspiracy theory. I, I kind of wasn't expecting to utter out of my mouth in 2026. I mean, that's a, <laughs> that's a little bizarre. Um, um, let's, let's assume for a minute that that's, that's not the case because that's just too weird of a conspiracy theory. Rust cultists infiltrate German government. Let's, let's put that aside for a minute. Cause that's just too ridiculous, right? Uh, maybe it's true, but Let's put that to the side. Um, let's assume that uh, that that's not the case. If that's not the case, why are they doing this? It doesn't make sense monetarily. It's not a good use of taxpayer funds. Um, it's not going to get them a whole bunch of kudos. It, I, it's not like I can see this getting German politicians just a massive landslide of votes, right? This isn't like it's some heavily politically charged topic outside of the software development and open source world. So why? Right? Like, I can't see anyone who benefits from this in any practical way other than maybe the specific people who get the money. And maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's just kind of dirty, dirty money spending around. I don't know. But it's really, really weird. I haven't gotten any response back from the, uh, the sovereign tech uh, the sovereign tech agency from the, from, uh, from Germany. Um, then again, I wrote my, my email in English, so I, I don't know if they're likely to respond to me or not, but we'll see. Uh, that's, that's that. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke journal subscribers for, uh, let me do this sort of coverage and dig into this. This is, this is ridiculous. This is utterly ridiculous. Go to lunduke.com, subscribe to a bunch of places for free, subscribe to a bunch of places to, uh, the Lunduke journal paid. If you want to continue to help the Lunduke journal, put out this sort of coverage, uh, $89 lifetime subscriptions all month, all January long and, uh, $50 or 50%. I can't talk anymore. I friggin' a, uh, this thing, the story broke my brain, 50% off monthly or yearly subs again, all January long. That gives you the MP4 downloads, the PDF eBooks, the forum access, and the lifetime subscribers can also optionally be put on the amazing Lunduke journal lifetime subscriber wall of shame. And you can go up here, but only if you ask, uh, by sending me an email, once you become a lifetime subscriber and I will put you up on on the totally awesome wall of shame. I have a few people that I need to get on there. Sorry about that. I will get you guys on there. I will get that updated this week for you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast.